Hello there and welcome to this video. My name is Riley and today we're going to be looking at a cryptocurrency which I think a lot of people have been sort of neglecting lately and haven't re hasn't really been in the spotlight for the last couple of months. And the cryptocurrency that I'm talking about is none other than NEM. And NEM has been dubbed the smart asset blockchain. Now as with all my videos, if you haven't seen any of my videos, what I do is I put these headings here and I'll put them down in the description box below with timestamps next to them so that if you want to see only a specific part of the video, you can go and click on that specific timestamp and it'll take you to that section of the video. A lot of people have seen these headings before so I'm not even going to go through them and without further ado, let's just get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so to start off with, what is NEM? And NEM has a couple of things to it. And the first bit is the NEM Foundation. And the NEM Foundation is a non-for-profit organization which is founded in Singapore and is the driving, behind, driving force behind the NEM platform. And we launched in March 2015, the New Economy Movement, or NEM, is a platform that was built to inherently address the issues which cryptos are facing today, like scalability, ease of use, energy consumption, governance, incentive to use, and a bunch of other things. Now, NEM did start off as a fork of NXT originally, another open source crypto, but um, it soon got its own code base after the development team at the NEM Foundation decided to rebuild the system from the ground up. I don't know why that says group, that should say ground. So to, for the coins with NEM, we um, have nearly 9 billion coins, basically 9 billion coins, and they were dispersed all when the platform was created, all to the community. And you may be thinking, gee, this is quite a lot of tokens, but NEM is a utility token and it kind of, I'll explain why, but NEM is through its features and its blockchain, it is trying to promote liquidity. And part of the reason it has liquidity is because it has this good amount of tokens. The blockchain um, creation time is around 60 seconds. So it's a pretty good block time. And also a big thing, NEM is written in Java, which is a very available coding language. And its cryptocurrency is actually called XEM or Zen. So some features of NEM. And the first one I want to talk about is proof of importance. And similar to it's similar to proof of stake. Uh, if you don't know what proof of stake is, it's basically when you stake your tokens that you own of that crypto onto the network in order to create blocks and get a block reward. And it's similar to this, but it includes more variables than just how much you're staking in your coins. So the, the things which affect it are basically how much NEM, I mean, sorry, how much ZEM has been spent in the past 30 days, with recent transactions being weighted more heavily. It also uh, depends on your vested amount of NEM, I mean, your vested amount of ZEM, I keep doing that, which is similar to your stake, and I'll get into vested amounts in a second. And it also depends on things called cluster nodes, and cluster nodes are accounts that are a part of clusters of activity, activity, I should say, and they're weighted slightly more than outliers or hubs. And outliers are something which are connected to the clusters but not inside them, and hubs are nodes which perform the same task, controlled and scheduled together. And proof of importance is really good because it has two major benefits over proof of stake. And the first one is that in proof of stake, people try will are more incentivized really to hoard their coins so that they can reap more rewards because basically the more coins you stake, the bigger block reward you get. And this, what this does, it creates centralization and it discourages liquidity in the system. So being a merchant, for example, spreading the Zem around and promoting liquidity is really much more economically viable than being a hoarder. And the process of creating blocks is called harvesting. So it's basically mining in um, the NEM platform. And this is where the block creator earns all the fees for the associated transactions on that block. And the chances of being a harvester are based in part on the importance of the account. And so now I mentioned that thing before about vested ZEM. And every account will have an, a vested amount of ZEM and an unvested amount of ZEM. Many benefits of the network, for example, your harvesting eligibility and your importance score, 
will depend on your vested Zen balance. And basically what it is, you how you start off with unvested Zen and it's basically like unstaked. And you can imagine vested Zen is basically comparable to your staked Zen. And what happens is it's a gradual process of uh, vesting, actually, I guess you'd call the process. With every 1440 blocks, which is about every day, 10% of one's unvested balance will go into their vested account. And once you have 10,000 vested Zem, you will be able to generate new blocks and earn the transaction fees for all the transactions on that block. And like I said, it's, in, it's vested at a rate of 10%. And um, as, I can, as I see in this picture below, if you have 20,000 non-vested Zem in your wallet, it will take about seven days to reach the minimum required amount of 10,000 vested Zem. Also, the, you have to have 3 million Zem in order to become a super node. And a super node basically is a temporary thing. It's sort of like the training wheels for the, the NEM blockchain to support it before mass adoption comes around. And super nodes are basically high performance, reliable nodes on the network. And they're regularly tested for their bandwidth, chain height, chain parts, computing power, and a bunch of other things to ensure that they are performing to these high standards. And what this does, this prevents, um, I guess, you might say this sort of, doesn't this increase um, centralization? And what if they have sort of malicious intentions on the network? But the fact is, if they did, they wouldn't um, sort of uh, tick off all the boxes for these um, super node requirements. And also, if they do meet all the requirements, they are randomly given rewards and they're bigger block rewards than normal. So whenever someone sends them, it is taken from both the vested and unvested accounts. And when someone receives it, it arrives unvested. Another thing with on the NEM platform is mosaics. And on the NEM platform, you can register assets. So physical assets on in converting physical assets and giving them a digital identity on the blockchain. And when you do this, you have to create a domain name. And this is basically like a domain name for a website, if you're familiar with how that whole process works. And each uh, member who wishes to create a mosaic needs to register a root domain name. And this can be bought for a specific amount of them. NEM also has multi-signature multi technology built into the platform, which is really good because a lot of other platforms have it as a second layer um, feature, um, but the NEM is just already straight into the platform. And also another cool thing they have is encrypted messaging, so private messaging. And I'll know that although it's not really a huge thing, it's still a cool thing to have nonetheless. So why is NEM useful? Well, it provides a platform for all these different in, um, institutional, um, I guess, areas, you could say. And it allows them to create their own special blockchains uh, for all different purposes easily on Java, which is a huge programming language. And soon they'll be able to use other platforms which are widely available, such as C++. I've got some examples here. We've got projects uh, like... a. Ecobit, which is backed by the Malaysian government and the UN, and the UN, I should say. Um, they've got a gaming project going on. Landstead, which is like a blockchain government assets um, uh, platform. And they've got IONM, which is basically bringing the internet of things to the NEM blockchain. So a couple of reasons why it is handy is because the combination of multi-sig tech with the proof of yeah, importance um, with something called proposals, which is, uh, I guess, a consensus thing where people can propose ideas on the blockchain because you got to think NEM is, it was created for the community, by the community, and it's got this whole sort of community aspect to it where people can, uh, because it's open source, not only that, but people in the community can put forward proposals for the blockchain and things like that, and if a consensus is reached, then that will go through. Also, like I said, um, it's they use a thing which is much less energy intensive, intensive than Bitcoin, and it's much more economically viable at about a hundred times. So that's a hell of a lot. It has really low fees, which are about 0.01%. So again, a huge uh, problem Bitcoin is facing. 
They have no inflation and a low supply for a utility token. And although nine billion coins is a lot, like I said, a utility token needs quite a few coins to promote liquidity. And although compared to some other utility tokens, NEM doesn't have that many, but the proof of importance thing is really the key thing here, which does promote liquidity. It's also much more scalable than things like Bitcoin and Ethereum currently, that is. And it's fully traceable. That's something to note. It's not made for privacy. It's something for public records and public data. So the community behind them, I won't even click on this uh, just to make the video a bit shorter, but my opinion on the team at NEM, they're not a star-studded team by any means, but they're a solid team nonetheless, and they seem to be delivering on their promises, so that is the real big thing that you have to look for. Also, the community the community has seen quite a large amount of growth lately, um, and you've got quite a few options to go look at the community. You've got the forums on the official NEM website. You've got about 14K followers on Facebook. You've got some really active Bitcoin forums. Whoops, sorry. You've got um, 11K uh, followers on Reddit and 105K followers on Twitter, which has just grown heaps over the past month. I think it's blown up about 40,000 followers over the past month. And this is due to renewed interest in the NEM project. So where do you buy and store NEM? Well, you got quite a few options. You got Bittrex, Poloniex, Yobit, HitBTC, which are all, I guess, in the Western world, they're all accessible by us and used by us. And also they had this um, this exchange called, I think it's Zayef, uh, which is the major, um, the major one of the major Japanese exchanges. And it's it's good to note that NEM is actually, I think it. It used to be, and I think it still is, the second most traded cryptocurrency in Japan. Now, the wallets for NEM, you have a couple of options. You have the official NEM desktop wallet, which I would recommend to use if you're going to choose one. But you also have official mobile wallets and then other de non-official desktop wallets. So, my thoughts on the future for NEM. They're looking to implement smart contracts in the future which will allow for greater scalability and greater accessibility especially for um, allowing the blockchain to be utilized for even more projects and more industries which is a big thing because NEM is trying to be like the jack of all trades and just cover the whole sort of system. Also they have another thing coming up called Catapult and this is basically a complete overhaul and enhancement of the Mijin uh, solution which is a part of the NEM blockchain. And what it will do, it will create viable performance for the finance industry. So it's basically increasing scalability, security, and accessibility in order to provide for institutional use of the blockchain. And that's a really huge thing. And also to note, this is happening before December 31st. And one, I think when this comes out, I think this is gonna be really good for the NEM price. And overall, in four words, I've summed the NEM project, solid but not revolutionary. And what do I mean by that? I mean, it's a good project, don't get me wrong, um, but it's not like world changing, I don't think. And I, do, I think that's kind of due to the fact in the nature of the project in that it's trying to be the jack of all trades and not really the ace of any trade. And that's okay, you don't have to be like that. But I think, as it's adopted and as it's more used, the NEM blockchain will be quite useful in the future as it's got that real community mindset. So a little bit of technical analysis to cap things off. Take a look at the USD chart for NEM here. And if I can just scroll out to the four hour, what you can see, what you can see here over the past year or so, let me see here. Yep, so we started up here. This is basically in here was about the altcoin bubble. And with NEM, we haven't really seen that much volatility in t uh, compared to other cryptocurrencies. Um, we can see here, we after the altcoin bubble, we've really sort of hovered around this 20 cent mark. And it's not until recently that we've had uh, news of upcoming announcements like things like Catapult 
that we've had some really good price action in the USD for NAND. And we can see here we've got good compared to uh, this really stretch for months. We've got some really good volume coming in at the moment. And we've started up a run up to here. We got it to about $1.1. And we can see very short term, if I can go to this hour chart, we can see we've just passed through this 50 day moving average. And we've got quite a big sort of pullback on it. But I don't really think that's much to worry about. Because, because as you can see here, there's a lot of red happening. And I mean, we've been just going up for quite a while. So this is just natural. It's not a crash. I, I hate it when I always hear people say, oh, it's crashing, it's crashing. It's not a crash after you've just run up like, God, what is that? 0.2 to 0.1, so 1.1. So over five times in the space of about a month. So it's nothing to worry about. We can see here the RSI is being oversold and the MACD is coming down really slow. I mean, really low, I should say. And a good thing, key thing to look at is here. It is quite often when you look at tops and bottoms, you will see very, very high volume. And as we can see here, we've got some really, really high sell volume coming out here. And so I do think I may be wrong if this is not financial advice or anything, but I think this is some really good volume coming out here to produce a bottom. And as we can see here, it has been a previous level of resistance for them. And as we all know, previous resistance tends to become new support. Also for the BTC chart, where are we here? Oh, here we are. We've got a pretty similar looking chart. Um, like as we can see here, um, lately we've got a pretty similar looking chart, but because of the stagnation of the price over the past few months, it's just been pulling back. Although over the past month, it has just been looking quite good. And we've got sort of this pullback here, but now I think, see we here we've got this volume, like I was saying before, we've got this volume, which is probably looking to be a bottom. We've got this RSI turning around here and approaching the oversold range. And we've also got the MACD coming down quite low. And so this isn't financial advice. Um, like I always say, I'm not a financial advisor, but I do think NEM is gonna have a really good sort of month going into January because um, it's got, it, the WeChat wallet has just been released. I think it was released on the 21st. Uh, we've got the Catapult release, which is coming before December 31st. And also we've got the NEM Global Hackathon, which is something, it's a competition, a development competition, sort of like the NEO competition, where they're developing on the NEM platform. So I think that's a couple of things to look out for. I am holding NEM, I do have some NEM, um, and I'm looking to see where it goes over the next month and sort of hold and see where it goes. But I do see good things for them over January, especially going into 2018. And once Catapult is released, I think there will be a lot more development and um, interest in the NEM platform because it will be much more scalable. And so that's just going to wrap up everything here. If you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up and a comment below and make sure to hit that subscribe button as I'll be bringing out future videos on other cryptocurrencies just like this one. I'll catch you later.